It's Friday, June 10th, 2022, and welcome to Episode 7 of the Alameda Postcast, an audio service of the Alameda Post. I'm your host, Scott Peeler. In this edition of the Postcast, primary election results, reactions to the county's mask mandate, new parking enforcement shifts gears, and art hits the ground in more ways than one. These stories and more on this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Our top story... This past Tuesday was primary election day in California. Even though a record 81% of eligible Californians were registered to vote, Tuesday's primary is on pace to record the second lowest gubernatorial primary turnout in state history, with around 27% of registered voters casting ballots. Alameda County's turnout was less than half that, with just over 12% of voters participating. Tightly contested county races included the office of 3rd District County Supervisor, Rebecca Kaplan and Lena Tam will face off in November. Kaplan received 39% of the vote, with Tam garnering 30. Tam, a former Alameda City Council member, won all but one precinct here in the city. The races for district attorney and sheriff will also be decided in November. Locally, the most closely watched item on the ballot was Measure B, the latest school funding effort from the Alameda Unified School District. The $298 million bond plan would have placed an additional $45 property tax levy on each $100,000 worth of assessed value. As of recording time, the measure did not receive the necessary 55% supermajority required for passage, with only 53.5% voting yes. The final counting of mail-in ballots may change those numbers further. Until the election is officially certified, we will continue to provide updates at alamedapost.com slash top. Remember, the general election is Tuesday, November 8th. It's been a week since Dr. Nicholas Moss, Alameda County's health officer, reinstated the county's indoor mask mandate in the face of rising hospitalizations of the Omicron variant wave. None of the other Bay Area counties have followed suit, nor has the city of Berkeley, which is an independent local health jurisdiction. Currently, the Alameda County mandate calls for masking in most indoor situations. There are multiple exceptions, including those who are actively eating or drinking, those engaged in strenuous physical activity, as well as participants in religious activities and performers at live events. While hospitalizations have been on an upward trend, there is some indication that cases have leveled off in the Bay Area or, in fact, begun to drop slightly. We'll be keeping an eye on the mask mandate here in Alameda at alamedapost.com. With so much to process about COVID, the San Francisco Chronicle has done an excellent job keeping you up to date. You can find a wealth of information at sfchronicle.com slash coronavirus. Last Friday, Congresswoman Barbara Lee paid a visit to Bay Farm Island as part of a tour to promote East Bay projects for which she has helped secure federal funding. The long-neglected Veterans Court seawall will receive $1.5 million dollars. This development was welcomed by Alameda Mayor Marilyn Ezzie Ashcraft in a statement that read, This project will provide critical relief to address the risk of flooding in adjacent residential neighborhoods, schools, roadways, commercial airports, Carica Park Municipal Golf Course, and the Oakland Airport. For full details on the various East Bay projects on the Congresswoman's list, visit alamedapost.com slash news. As noted back in Episode 4 of the Alameda Postcast, the city has begun an increased enforcement effort for parking violations along Webster and Park Streets. Part of that effort involves shifting enforcement duties to the Department of Public Works. As noted on the City of Alameda's Facebook page, the new effort has taken the next step. For May 23rd and lasting for two weeks, warnings were issued. Now, the city will begin issuing regular citations. To keep up with parking in Alameda, visit alamedaparking.org. It took longer than expected, it cost more than was budgeted for, it was shut down for eight years, and it made a big mess. But it ended with fireworks and a three-day-long party. What was it? The creation of the island of Alameda. Prior to 1902, Alameda was a peninsula. A plan put in place by the Army Corps of Engineers changed all that. This Saturday, you can learn all about that massive project that turned Alameda into an island city as our popular historical walking tours return. This month's theme, Alameda's Changing Shoreline. Join Dennis Evanoski for three trips back in time, covering the genesis of the island, the heyday of Neptune Beach, and the creation of the South Shore. Details at alamedapost.com slash tours. If you sign up for the three-tour package, you'll save more than 10% over the individual rate. Now look at upcoming events of interest to the Alameda community. 
Get your shovels and pails ready as the City of Alameda presents the 54th Annual Sandcastle and Sculpture Contest this Saturday, with registration beginning at 9 a.m. at Robert Crown Memorial State Beach. The event is free, with three divisions, 12 and under, 13 and over, and family. For full details, visit alamedapost.com events. Altarina Playhouse is in the third weekend of The Quality of Life. Written by Emmy Award-winning Bay Area playwright Jane Anderson, The Quality of Life is set in Berkeley in the wake of the 1991 East Bay Hills wildfires. For tickets and show details, visit altarina.org. We Players continues the run of the world premiere of The Keeper. Founding artistic director Ava Roy draws on the real-life stories of over 100 women who served as lighthouse keepers from Maine to California. Performances will be at Alameda Point in the courtyard of Building 16 at the corner of West Essex Drive and Saratoga Street. Follow the signs from City Hall West. For more details, visit weplayers.org. That's W-E-P-L-A-Y-E-R-S dot O-R-G. Curious about the future of housing here on the island? The Alameda Chamber and Economic Alliance is hosting a discussion about plans for new housing. The event is led by Andrew Thomas, City of Alameda Director of Building, Planning, and Transportation. This free event was originally scheduled for June 9th, but has been rescheduled for Thursday, June 23rd at Almanac Brewing on Tower Avenue in Alameda Point near the Alameda Naval Air Museum. While the event is free, signups are requested. Visit alamedapost.com events. In Alameda news around the web, you might want to extend an invitation to your friends and family in the greater Bay Area today. While Alameda and Oakland are not included, much of the surrounding area will be under a heat advisory Friday from 11 a.m. until 10 p.m. Here on the island, multiple forecasts say Friday may see temperatures in the high 80s. Do you have some big ideas for art? I mean, really big. How big? How's 13 acres sound? Well, here's your chance. The West End Arts District is looking to turn a huge part of the Naval Air Station's former taxiway into public art. Connecting Waterfront Park to Spirits Alley, this is your opportunity to go big, literally. The goal of the project is to beautify and revitalize the area and encourage residents and visitors to use the area for recreation, cycling, walking. The secondary goal is to connect businesses at either end of the taxiway and encourage more traffic to the area. As well, the project is intended to consider the representation and engagement of the diverse communities living and working at Alameda Point. For full details and links to the application process, visit alamedapost.com slash features. While we try to cover as many stories as possible here on the Postcast, there just isn't time to include all the wonderful content that the Alameda Post has to offer, notably the great contributions of our features writers. Among the gems you'll find, fitness and nutrition advice from Denise Lum, the island adventures of Jeff Camber's canine companion, Moof, the reminiscences of former Alameda firefighter Dave Lemoyne, Richard Bangert's writing on environmental concerns, and Steve Gorman's Alameda Treasures, a look at the stories behind the beautiful houses that populate our hometown. Take some time and get to know the island we love a little better at alamedapost.com. That's it for this episode of the Alameda Postcast. Visit our website, alamedapost.com slash newsletter to sign up for our weekly newsletter. It's free and we'll never sell or give your personal information to anyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Find the Postcast wherever you get your podcasts or simply tell your smart device to play the Alameda Postcast podcast. Remember, school's out, so it's time to exercise extra caution as you drive by our parks and playgrounds. I'm Scott Peeler. I'll be back next Friday for Episode 8 of the Alameda Postcast.